Good evening guys. This is Dr. Paul once again. Thank you for tuning to our channel this morning and watching this video. As always, I invite you to visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net where we have posted hundreds of videos on medical subjects for especially for those preparing for USML examination. So please take some time today to visit our website. Today I want to talk a few minutes about diabetic ketoacidosis. Diabetic ketoacidosis basically is a most common complication of diabetes. As you can understand by the term itself, it is an acidotic condition produced by excessive amounts of ketones in a diabetic patient. Now let us go one by one. The significance, it is the most common acute life-threatening complication of diabetes. The pathogenesis, just think in terms of lack of adequate insulin in the body. When the patient does not get adequate insulin, the counter-regulated hormones, the growth hormone, glucagon, cortisol, they act up. They increase glucose production in the body through processes like uh, gluconeogenesis. As a result, the body sugar level increases tremendously it's more than 250 milligrams per deciliter in some instances. And what happens in those circumstances? These hormones also increase lipolysis producing large quantities of free fatty acids. These fatty acids, they cannot enter citric acid cycle to be consumed. They stay in the blood and these fatty acids are converted into ketones, a stone, estoastic acid and beta hydroxybutyric acid. These ketones, they show up in the blood, they show up in the urine. So you can understand the laboratory results just from the pathogenesis. There will be high glucose level more than 250 milligrams per deciliter. There will be high ketones in the blood and in urine. And ketones produce an acidotic condition so there will be a pH of less than 7.3 and it's a metabolic acidosis which is less bicarb. So bicarbonate level will be less than 15 milliequivalents per liter in this condition. So basically those are the pathogenetic results in this problem. Now you should always consider the cause. In most um, areas the causes will be like infection, infectious diseases. Patient won't be able to take insulin adequately and in some case injury or trauma acute coronary syndrome, myocardial infarction, and uh, transient ischemic attack, stroke, acute and chronic pancreatitis, alcohol intoxication, sometimes patients, they lose control because they are intoxicated, they don't take insulin adequately. And uh, in conditions like depression, where patients just don't bother to take any insulin because they are just tired of things. So all of these things produces a non-compliance with uh, insulin regimen resulting in diabetic ketoacidosis. Now symptoms and signs. There will be fatigue and weakness because even though there is large quantities of glucose in the body, it is not utilized because there is no insulin. So fatigue and uh, weakness, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, polyuria, polydyspia, and uh, polyphagia, and also deep rapid respirations. We have the term Kussmaul's respirations for this. And also there will be a fruity or acetone odor on the breath. Those are the signs and symptoms of this condition. And laboratory results, as I said, high glucose level more than 250 milligrams per deciliter, low bicarb value less than 15 milliequivalents per liter, and uh, low pH less than 7.3. So those are the main things, and also ketones in the blood and the urine. 
Now, one important thing we need to talk about is serum potassium level. Serum potassium level, it raises because insulin comes out of, sorry, potassium comes out of the cells. Because potassium comes out of the cells, you will see hyperkalemia in diabetic ketoacidosis. But that is not real. That's not a real hyperkalemia. And if you give insulin to these patients, insulin drives potassium into the cells and it produces severe hypokalemia in these patients. That's why in, in the treatment of diabetic ketoacidosis, we give potassium before we start them on insulin therapy. So potassium, it is a fictitious rise in these patients. Also sodium. Sodium level falls because of the glucose osmolality serum sodium level is decreased and that is not the real decrease phosphate there will be a real phosphate depletion in diabetic acidosis and you need to treat that there are many many theories about it like uh, can we treat it acutely or after some time i think treating phosphate de depletion after some time is fine the other thing you need to consider about is anion gap Anion gap is calculated by using the formula sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. That is sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. It's usually 8 to 16. And also serum osmolality. Serum osmolality more than 340 milli osmols per kg usually produces mental status changes in these patients. And finally, diabetic uh, kidney failure. In many patients, these patients, they get kidney acute renal insufficiency resulting in higher BUN and creatinine levels. And whenever you see these patients, you need to treat them with uh, IV fluids. So we give IV fluids just to protect the kidney and also to increase the intravascular volume. And that's a separate video you can watch when we discuss the treatment of diabetic ketoacidosis. So basically, the symptoms and signs and the pathogenesis and the laboratory results, these three things are most important because diabetic ketoacidosis is one of the most commonly tested topic in the USML examination. So thanks very much for watching. For those of you who are taking clinical skills, I'm recommending a new book, USML Smasher, and uh, please go to our website at uh, usmlevideos.net and uh, buy this book. This is an extremely useful book and uh, I studied this book for my examination and I recommend the same. Many of you go to expensive courses paying thousands of dollars and I think that is just unnecessary. All you need is to learn the tricks of the trade and go for the examination. So buy USML clinical skills you can see on our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you very much. God bless you. Bye-bye.